man, in Belgium it always rains. And how am I gonna clean this up? Oh, wait a second. What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Yuzalea and I'm back with another exciting tutorial. Today we're gonna see how to recreate the Aquaman water shield effect in Adobe After Effects. Really cool effect that has been suggested a lot by the subscribers here on the channel. So really cool. I just got back from Spain to test out this bad boy. Well actually I didn't go to Spain to test this out but it was a perfect opportunity to test out this amazing laptop by Razer. I will definitely be doing a review on this laptop. It's really really awesome, especially if you're a video editor or a visual effects artist It just performs super well for a laptop and it's also a great display So that's something that I love, but that's for another video. I just wanted to show you this real quick. Okay So before we start with the actual tutorial I just want to make a quick announcement on what we have been working on for the last couple of months something really exciting We have been working hard in the dark nobody knew about it, but we actually just released our new website CreatorGalaxy.com and CreatorGalaxy.com is basically what ToleratedCinematics.com was before just in a newer better version of itself and also with the capacity of becoming famous in the entire galaxy so be sure to be one of the first to join our Creator Galaxy community and actually I also got something for you guys a little gift for the release of CreatorGalaxy.com so ToleratedCinematics.com is now going to move forward as CreatorGalaxy.com because we want to make it bigger better and just more impactful in the entire community so that would be really great if you go and check out our new website let me know in the comments below what you think of it if you have any suggestions feel free to let me know and now on with the gift I've been working on a very nice wallpaper for Creator Galaxy and that's the wallpaper you see right now I'm actually really happy how it came out I've been working hard on this wallpaper and I just didn't find a nice wallpaper online that I wanted to use on my desktop PC so I just started designing one myself and if you want this wallpaper as well all you have to do is just click on the link in the description below because this wallpaper is free to download so if you would like to download this one link in the description below will take you to that link and now for another giveaway that we will be doing for this announcement is we will be giving away $100 product value from our website so anything on our website that just comes to a value of $100 in total will be given away to one lucky winner and to enter this giveaway it's really simple all you have to do is download our wallpaper and post a photo on your Instagram account make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Ineas Alea. Also follow Crater Galaxy at Crater Galaxy and then just make sure to tag Crater Galaxy in that photo and that's all you have to do. Apart from that I don't ask you to do anything else. This giveaway is going to be ending in 10 days and then we will pick one lucky winner. You will be contacted through Instagram in order to receive your prize. Alright so enough talking for now. I was just so excited to tell you about this announcement. So now on with the tutorial. If you want to follow along with this tutorial using the exact same footage as me like usual I will put a link in the description below so you can download this footage and then we are going to be using this in Adobe After Effects if you enjoy watching my videos be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you stay notified when I upload new videos and apart from that let's open up Adobe After Effects and get started Alright, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and this is the footage that I provided for you where I'm spinning and making my Aquaman shield. So I will drag this into a new composition and the first thing that I'll do is right click and create a new solid layer. This is going to be a fractal noise layer. You already know that fractal noise is one of my favorite effects in Adobe After Effects. So what I'll do is go to effect noise and grain and add a fractal noise effect to that solid layer. Then what I'm going to do is open up the transform settings and uncheck uniform scaling. I will increase the width just something like that and then just increase the contrast until I get something like that and also change my fractal type to dynamic progressive. You can play with the invert setting and see what works for you. I kind of like the invert setting here. And then I'll hold Alt and click on the stopwatch for the evolution to add a time expression. So write time times 250. And then you get something like that going. 
And then what I want to do is animate this fractal noise to go from the right to the left. So what I'll do is go in my transform settings, offset turbulence and create a keyframe for the offset turbulence at the beginning of your timeline. Then go all the way till the end of your timeline and just decrease it with minus 15,000. And then you get something like that going. Okay, so once you're satisfied with your effect, what you can do is click on the fractal noise and go for layer precomposes effect and just rename this fractal noise 01 and okay. Then I'm going to precompose this once again and I'm going to rename this fractal noise seamless and click okay. Double click on the fractal noise seamless and then we have our offset here. Right here, I'm going to click on my fractal noise, go to edit and duplicate this layer. Then I'm going to search for the effects and presets offset. And I'm going to drag this onto my new layer that we just duplicated. Then I'm going to offset it to just in the center. So we actually see the seam right here. We want to get rid of the seam and that's why we're using this offset effect. What we need to do is uh, to bring the original layer on top and mask this out right here in the center. And then press F on the keyboard and feather it quite a bit so it looks like it's seamless. And now we can actually see that it's covering up that seam and the left part will actually fill in the right part. So it's a completely seamless texture uh, on the left and right hand side, not on the top and bottom side, but that's not what we need. So we can go back to our main composition, which is the Aquaman spin footage composition. And here we want to add a polar coordinates effect to this layer. So polar coordinates, search it in effects and presets and apply that to the fractal noise. Here we want to change the type of conversion from rect to polar and change it to 100%. And now we have a nice circle just like that. Next, I want to search for the circle effect. That's under generate circle, apply that to your layer. And we're going to use a blending mode stencil alpha which is going to cut out our layer and use it as a mask invert the circle so we have a hole in the middle and then increase the radius until you like it then open up the feather tab and increase the feather to your preference now we can click on the layer circle and go to edit duplicate and we're going to uncheck the invert circle we're going to increase the radius so we also are going to kind of fade out the edges and get something like that going that looks pretty cool. We can also go into the feather tab and decrease the feather. So we actually have a nice fade off right here. And that actually looks already pretty damn good. So, all right, let's see how that is turning. So it's turning to the right, which is good because I'm actually spinning the pole here to the right. So that's perfect. Now we can put it in position just like that and also change the blending mode to something like screen. And immediately we already have a pretty cool effect just like this. Okay, so that looks super awesome. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to press T on the keyboard and lower the opacity quite a bit to something like maybe 40. Then go to effect, blur and sharpen and add a Gaussian blur effect to this layer and increase the blur quite a bit, something like that. Now we're going for effect, blur and sharpen again and this time we're going to use CC vector blur. CC vector blur is a nice blur effect if you want to add some kind of liquid effect to a layer. So if we're going to increase this to something like 10, we're immediately going to see some kind of strains here, which is going to look pretty cool. If you increase it even more, you get something weird like this. So I think 10 looks perfect. Okay, cool. We can also go into the circle effect, the first one, and kind of decrease this one so we have a little bit more going on in here. And also press S on the keyboard if you want to scale this and make it a little bit smaller. Maybe you want the circle to be smaller like that. Okay. Next, what we want to do is click on this layer and duplicate it. But now what we want to do is go into the project manager and click on our fractal noise seamless and a fractal noise layer 01. Go to edit and duplicate these two layers in your project manager. Open up Fractal Noise 02 and open up Fractal Noise Seamless 02. Click on the two layers that are in the Fractal Noise Seamless layer and then we're going to click on Fractal Noise 02 in the project manager and now we're going to hold Alt and drag this on top of these. That's going to replace these two layers for that new composition that we just duplicated. 
The reason why is because we want to add some variation in here and we want to kind of add a different effect to this one. So if you open up the Fractal Noise O2 and go to the Fractal Effect, the layer, we click on it, go to Effects Controls, we want to increase the contrast quite a bit and decrease the brightness so we have a few of these white spots which looks really awesome. If now we're going to click in the main composition on the Fractal Noise Seamless, go to the Project Manager and also select Fractal Noise Seamless 2, hold Alt and drag this on top to replace it, we're now going to see something like that. And if we're going to uncheck this and check it on, now we're going to get some kind of nice highlights. You can go back to your Fractal Noise 2 and just increase the contrast a little bit more, decrease the brightness and just find something that you like. And that's just totally going to change the look of your effect. Change the blending mode to add to see what that does. And that's also looking pretty good. Lower the opacity, increase the impact opacity. It's completely up to you. And again, we can also increase the vector effect here. Maybe a little bit more because that actually looks a little bit better. Maybe like 15. And decrease the Gaussian blur here. Or delete it. And now we have something like that, looks pretty cool. We can also duplicate once more the original Fractal Noise Seamless. Go to Edit, Duplicate, and remove the Vector Blur, but increase the blur to make some kind of misty kind of look. And then also lower the opacity to something like 15. And that way you kind of build up a nice stack of layers. This is eventually going to look pretty cool. So now we're getting somewhere. Now what we want to do is use one of these layers. I think this one looks pretty good or actually this one right here. We're going to be using this layer as a displacement map. So what we want to do is duplicate this layer, edit, duplicate. And now we're going to layer, pre-compose this layer, displacement texture. And make sure that you move all the attributes into the new composition and click OK. Open up that composition and then right click new and create a new solid layer and click on the color and right here at black just enter 50% so you have a perfect 50% gray color and click OK, OK and bring this to the bottom. Click on the Fractal Noise Seamless, go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves and increase the curves or decrease them to make something different or add some contrast in here so you get some kind of cool looking texture in here. Once you have that, go back to your main composition and deselect this layer. This is your displacement texture. Now right click and go to new and add a new adjustment layer. This is going to be our actual displacement. And the displacement is going to make it look like there is actually water flowing there because water actually distorts your image. So we can go into effect, distort, displacement map, and then choose the displacement texture as a displacement and increase it on horizontal and vertical. And the reason why we actually chose our background here to be gray is everything that is gray, 50% gray, is not going to be affected. And now that already looks pretty damn cool. If you bring it on top, it's also going to affect the actual kind of shield. So that's completely up to you what you want to do with that. I like to bring it on top here and get something like that. Cool. Okay, so now we have our effect with the fractal noise layers. What we want to do now is add some actual kind of water particles in this effect. So I'm going to right click new and add a new solid layer. Particle water rotation. And click OK. This is going to be our particle layer. And we're going to be using trap code particular in order to create this effect. And this is a really powerful plugin for Adobe After Effects. So I highly encourage you to get that plugin. It's one of the most powerful plugins for Adobe After Effects. So we're going to right click and create a new null object and then right click again, new light and make it a point light and rename this light emitter because emitter is the name that will be recognized by the plugin that we're going to be using called particular. So click OK here and OK. Now for the null object, make sure that you toggle the switches so you see this mode here where you can make this null object a 3D layer. Now press P on the keyboard for the null object and you'll see the position in 3D space. And then click on the light and also press P on the keyboard to reveal its position right here. 
Click on a position for the null, control C to copy and click on a position for the emitter, control V to paste. And now your light is going to be in the dead center of the null. Now what we want to do is bind the position of the emitter to the null. So whatever, if we bind it to the null here, wherever the null goes, the light goes. But if we offset the position of the layer here, of the position of the emitter, it's still going to look at the null to change its values. So if we're going to move this more to the right, for example, and now we're going to click on the null and rotate it, for example, on Z, we're going to get a nice circle effect. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to hold Alt and click on the stopwatch for the Z rotation of the null layer. Here I'm going to write a simple expression called time, again times 200, and let's see what that does. So if we're going to look forward, it's also rotating in the correct order. And I think this is going to be fast enough, but that's something that we'll see later. We can still adjust this later on in time. Now go back to your layer particle water rotation. And here we want to add effect trap code particular. And there we go. So now the interesting part is going to the emitter settings and we can actually solo this layer so we can really concentrate on this effect here. We're going to use emitter type light and immediately it's going to recognize this light right here because it's called emitter and if we're going to kind of move forward in time well you'll see that's rotating and the particles are sticking to that light. We need to change a few things. Velocity will change this to like 10 and see what that does. Okay cool. The size X, Y, Z, I'm going to change to 300. The velocity for motion, maybe to, let's say 10. And we have something like that going, pretty cool. Then we want to go into the particle tab right here and change the life to 1.5. The life random, maybe to 35. Particle type should be a sphere. Feather is okay. The size 1.5. Size random 35. Go into the size over life. And if you're going to increase this right here, go into the preset mode and just make this preset, which is going to increase the size over life and then decrease it once they're dying off, something like that. So that's going to, inc well, that's going to have a nice kind of fade effect to it. Blending mode, we can set this to add or screen. Then go into the physics tab and we want to give it a little bit of gravity, something like 50. So it kind of does something. And for the air, we can also open up the air tab and go into the turbulence field and then increase the effect position to like 100, but decrease the scale to something like two. And that should be about it. Now we're going to increase the particles per second here at the top to something like 10,000. Looking pretty cool. We can also increase the velocity for motion to something like 35. So it actually moves a little bit more off center or like 25 and change the scale here for the turbulence field to something like five and see what that does. I think the particles move a little bit too slow. So what I'll do is go into the null effect, press E twice on the keyboard and increase the time to like 500. Okay, now we're getting something, it looks pretty cool. I'm also going to click again on this layer and the velocity for motion, we're going to change it back to 10 because they're going a little bit too much off center. And that looks really cool. So there we have it, we have some water. Maybe we wanna increase the gravity a little bit more because it's not really very realistic. So for the gravity to maybe 100. And that's going to look a little bit better. Okay, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Okay, and now for the final effect here, we're going into the rendering settings and we're going to open up motion blur, go to the comp settings and just turn this on. And that's going to add motion blur to our particles and it's going to make it look like water droplets that are just really uh, moving very fast. And I think this looks really, really cool. So that's exactly what we want. I'm going to unsolo this layer and see what that does on my top layer. Going to the toggle the switches and also changes to a screen mode. Maybe lower the opacity by pressing T on the keyboard and then just clicking on the null effect and position this 
in the center right here. And there we go. We can also go into the particle settings again and maybe change the emitter size to 500 and increase the particles to 25,000. And also select all of these three top layers and move them a little bit more to the left of your timeline off track. Uh, so they're actually already spawn while uh, the video is playing. So move them over and then just extend this clip right here. And there we have it. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. You can also increase the time here to 1000 maybe. And increase the gravity even more. And in this case, you can always, if you don't see the blurred layers very well, what you can do is go into the motion blur and just go into opacity boost and change this to something like 10. And that's going to increase the brightness of the blurred layers. Well, actually, this is a little bit too much, like 3. That's looking all right. Okay, so that looks super. Another thing that I've done is add some smoke kind of coming off it. So it's actually moving to the right. So some smoke should kind of mist off here to the left. So what I'll do is create a new solid layer really quick. Again, fractal noise, go to effect, noise and grain, add a fractal noise layer here. We're going to increase the transform setting here like so and maybe increase the contrast just a tiny bit. Then click on the stopwatch for the offset turbulence, press U on the keyboard and bring this keyframe to the beginning of the timeline. Go till the end of the layer and then just move it more to the left and also move it up. And let's see what we have here. So that's a little bit too slow. We're going to increase this quite a bit. So we really want to have some kind of smoke flying left up. Still a little bit too slow. And that's a little bit too fast, so it's really kind of playing with these effects until you find something that you're satisfied with. And then hold Alt and click on the stopwatch for the evolution and also change it to something like time times 500. And now we have some smoke going on. Okay, click on that layer and go to the pen tool and check this layer so you don't see this and kind of draw a nice mask, something like this and then enable this layer again press f on the keyboard and feather it quite a bit then change the blending mode to a screen and press t on the keyboard and change it to like 10 percent and just by doing that see what you have right here you have some smoke coming off this and this is really going to make it a lot more realistic awesome so these are a few tips and tricks in order to add a little bit more realism in your shot. Of course, take more time into fine tuning this, um, but that's completely up to you. The next thing that I've done is take water from the pool to get into this whirlpool right here. So what I'll do is also I used, for example, this smoke layer. I'm going to duplicate it, press M on the keyboard and delete this mask. I'm going to solo this, press T on the keyboard and increase it to 100. I'm going to search for Bezier, a warp effect. Right here we have a Bezier warp, so I'm going to use this one. And what we can do is really kind of fine tune this. And completely modify this layer by moving all these points. I'm going to unsolo this layer and bring these two keyframes here. and kind of draw an image like that. And I think you're seeing what I'm doing here. And that's looking pretty cool. Okay, and there we go. Now we're going to click on that layer and I'm going to add an effect blur and sharpen Gaussian blur to blur it out, something like that. And then we can also go for effect color correction curves, maybe to kind of decrease and increase. So we have a little bit more detail going on. And then also blur and sharpen CC vector blur to add a little bit more of a kind of liquid effect to it. And then just press T on the keyboard and lower the opacity. And now 
Well, it's going the other way here, so we can see it's going down, but uh, if we just click on this layer, press U on the keyboard, and just click and reverse these two keyframes here. Now it's kind of sucking in the water into our whirlpool, which is really, really cool. So these are a few of the techniques I've been using in order to create this effect. Of course, also play with the opacity of all these layers. So right here, I think this might be a little bit too much. This one might be a little bit too much as well. So really try to keep it subtle and that's going to look a lot better. Okay, and then now lastly, what I've also done is created a new solid layer with particle again, with particles again, and I'm going to apply effect again, trap code particular. There we go. And bring this on top. Solo this for now. And now I'm going to open up the designer, which is a really powerful kind of extra workspace to um, work with your particles. And what I like to do here is I actually took some particles here. I went into the physics and I changed this to a fluid uh, model, which is actually one of their new models uh, to be used here. And in the emitter type, I also changed this to a sphere, I guess. And there we go. Go back to the physics. And I changed it to a vortex ring. The vortex ring is really interesting here. So I'm going to rotate my vortex ring to be like 65, something like that. So it's angled towards that side. And now we have something like that going. So I ended up using these settings here, a buoyancy of five, the region size 500, which is original, a vortex strength of 400, a swirl scale of 25, random swirl 25. And then I also used viscosity one and I applied these settings. I went into the render tab, go into the motion blur and changed my motion blur to on. And immediately we get something like that. So there we go. We have some motion blur, which makes it look all very realistic. Move it over a little bit more to the left, move it over. And then we also want to enable this layer again and go into the emitter right here and just click on the position and position it kind of on the water here. But that's going to kind of direct it towards our swirl here, so that's really cool. And there we go. So now it's kind of taking real water into our twirl. Okay, cool. And then there's one more thing that I've done is I used a few of the uh, water splash effects from Action VFX uh, just because that makes it look a little bit more realistic. Um, working with real footage in combination with visual effects just usually works the best. We'll put a link in the description below so you can go and check out Action VFX that way. And that's basically it. I just played a little bit more with adding a few more of these suction uh, parts like one over here. So it goes into the circle and just repeat this process over. But basically, this is how I achieved the Aquaman shield effect. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and definitely check out our website. We have a bunch of offer. <laughs> okay, that's not gonna work. Okay, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and definitely hit the notification bell so you stay notified when I upload new videos and also check out our website. We have a bunch of stuff to offer for any digital creator and if you buy something from the website, it really helps to support this channel. Hope to see you guys and girls in the next one. Goodbye.